That was a bad turn. You know, one thing that struck me on the way to this ride today was, you know, I was thinking about some of the car videos that I've been watching on YouTube about, you know, 600, 700 horsepower, this car versus that car. Then it kind of struck me when it comes to mountain bike speed going downhill, ignoring pedaling sections and all that, of course. We all have the same engine. Gravity. Your speed is purely determined by your body movements and how often you squeeze those brake levers, which is kind of kind of crazy if you think about it. That I could be theoretically going as fast as say like Nate Hills if I stop using these things right here. That's it. Think about that. Oh, that was sketchy. Oh, keep it together, James. <laughs> Holy shit. You take one corner a little bit better than somebody else. And if it, on a trail, if there's 200 corners, that time adds up. See, like right there, I applied a lot of brake just because that was a sketchy section that I just felt comfortable riding my brake a little bit. Whereas a pro rider might not be braking at all during these parts, so it's kind of interesting. Anyway, those are the kind of random things that go through my mind on the way to a ride. There's a ton of deer out today. I guess the mountain lions are on vacation. If you're wondering why I'm going so slow today, there's a reason for that. So I quit my job last week and I'm starting a new job in about two and a half weeks. And I made the stupid mistake of quitting the job at the end of the month when my health insurance runs out. What I should have done is quit the first of the month so that I have coverage to the end of the month. But this idiot did not do that. And I looked at those prices of COBRA or continuing coverage for my whole family and Let's just say it was half the price of a carbon Yeti frame. And that was for one month. So, for those of you guys listening from Canada, welcome to the American healthcare system. All right, so this isn't a bad climb here. I'll normally climb it in my 42 in the rear, but one thing I've noticed about the Eagle 
or having that 50 in the rear. Everyone says it's a bailout gear and I used to not use it until I got like really tired. Then I realized that's probably not the best time to use it. You know, you should probably use it so you don't get tired. <laughs> so, I don't know. I've been experimenting a little bit with using it more often. Even if it feels a little bit too easy, I think if it saves me energy and lets me ride longer, which is the key here, that's a good thing. If I'm more refreshed, if I'm not as tired, if I need less time to recover before my next ride, I mean, those are a lot of the benefits of additional range that a lot of people don't talk about. Everyone's get super macho when a 50 comes out and they brag about how they don't need anything more than a 36, which is great, good for you. I don't know where you live, but a 36 may or may not work everywhere, especially if you live in some steeper areas with a lot of elevation, but. Try that again, shall we? No insurance, James. The no insurance ride. Maybe that's what I should name it on Strava. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.